Let's get started with how to deploy and use Domotes Pro. Giancarlo presenting. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, there it is, uh, my name is Giancarlo Fanelli, and I'm a part of Domotes since the first day. I started uh, uh, developing the first lines of code in Domos and helping the development team in, the, in designing the architecture for our cloud solution to offer you a very good remote monitoring and management uh, service. I'm currently living in the US where I joined the customer support and customer uh, success team. Um, and that's my role. I help you use Domos in the best way. During our previous webinar, my colleague JB introduced uh, the Domots as a company and show you why we, um, we brought Domots to you and the best way for you to use Domots uh, for your customer to save time and money. So basically to boost your profits uh, or just to deliver a better and superior customer service to your customer. While during this webinar, we will uh, touch with our hands uh, through a demo on um, on a day by day scenario of using Domots Pro through the app, mobile app, or through the web app, and we will end the presentation in uh, with the configuration of the new agents or so the the monitor of the new network and new site, and we will pass through the usage of our Domots portal to manage your team, to manage what we call credits, to manage. Uh, the, the networks that you want to monitor and the uh, functionality or feature available for any single site. So let me jump into our portal and uh, let, me, let me mention that all the features that I'm going to show you today are available through a web app that is available through the portal, which is where you can sign up for your account and you manage your sites and you manage your team and we will see this one during the presentation. But whatever is available through the web app is also available through a mobile uh, iOS or Android app. So let's jump into the web app through opening this one. So this is what we call an overview of all the networks, all the sites that you monitor on a real, on a, on a live, on a, on a, a real uh, scenario. So from this overview, you have really quick view of all the sites that you want to monitor, that you want to check. And as you can see here, you can really spot quite easily that there are some sites having a big issue. They are localized, so they are really uh, geographically uh, localized in an area. And uh, I know they are using the same ISP provider, so it might be an ISP issue in this case. This red uh, color of the site means that the agent is not able to uh, to speak to our cloud, which might be a local issue to the network or in general an issue with ISP connectivity to the cloud. Moreover, from the same overview, you can easily spot on sites where there are uh, devices having issues. So for example, in these sites, there is one of the devices that it's important for you which means that you expect them to be always online, which is currently offline. And through the overview, you can uh, sort the device, uh, the, the agents or the site that you want to monitor. You can uh, search for a specific house and, uh, and imagine that this kind of solution should scale for hundreds of homes, hundreds of networks that you want to monitor. So going back to the device that you want to monitor, let me mention that uh, our solution has been designed to give you a really uh, quick overview of every site that you want to monitor in terms of uh, the device discovered on the network. So we are really, um, um, really keen to have been uh, you aware of uh, the device connected to uh, each network that you want to manage. So let's jump into what we call an agent dashboard, which is where all the features for a specific um, for a specific site are available directly with a, with a click. So the first tile, and this is where you access to the feature, is just a, a quick overview of the important devices that you have configured on that network. 
And if one of those devices is spot offline, which means it's not reachable anymore from the locally to the network, it's reported here. And you can jump directly to that device view. But let me introduce to the next tile, which is our core. As you might know, Domus is really powerful in discovering devices uh, on the network and identify every single device by uh, naming the, those devices through different protocol to classify the devices in types and to discover uh, feature capabilities, attributes of every single device using different protocols on the network. We scan every single network every uh, 30 seconds. And we report if a device is new on that network or if a device that is, has been, has been uh, discovered previously on the network is not available anymore. And if it's not available anymore, which means that it's not answering to ping, we say that we, it, that device loses a heartbeat. So the, the two domots being used as a monitoring solution allows you to uh, be informed if a specific device is not answering to a single ping that we send every 30 seconds. Or you can also manage the uh, configuration of every single device and say that a specific device should be marked as offline only after a specific time window. So what happens is that we will send, we will send heartbeat messages to the device every 30 seconds, but we will report this specific device to be offline only if we miss uh, the heartbeat every uh, in four minutes in a row. So it's like eight times heartbeat in a row. This is what we call live monitoring of a, of a, of a site. And this is uh, how, why it is important for you, this kind of solution. Let me mention that the scan of the network and the identification of the devices on the network is really fast. So as soon as you configure a new agent, you have a lot of information already populated on, uh, about every single device. But for every single device, you can reach information. Of course, some, something should be manually done. So for example, the location of a specific device, and you can select from a, a, a list of available location in the house or the, uh, the zone of the house. As we said at the beginning, the devices that you really take care of are marketed as important devices. Again, our solution allows an automatic identification of some type of devices important, but are free to mark the device as indifferent if you don't care about that specific device. So let me, let me jump into some advanced device discovery. So we mentioned that we are really good in identifying identify devices. And this is basically due to the fact that we rely on billions of devices already discovered by our tools. Uh, we scan the local network, the local subnet where the Domots agent is connected to. But you are free to configure multiple VLANs through the agents, so it will scan on multiple VLANs as well. Now, I'm going to introduce something, uh, something more advanced. So we usually you use monitor the tools to uh, monitor the life status of the device, which is basically a binary status of the device. However, you can not only check the life status of the device, but you can check advanced parameters. So, for example, on the, uh, on the main UPS, on one of the devices, I can set through the mean of what we call eyes some parameters that can be extracted directly through the SNP protocol. So, uh, let me say that this is really something for advanced users. So, uh, feel free to contact us if you have doubt about the usage of this kind of feature. So, you can monitor SNP through uh, OID monitoring, or you can monitor any single service on every single device. So you, if you want to just monitor the, the web service on a specific device, you just add that service. And the tool will automatically try to see if that service is available on that specific device. If it is available and uh, it is alive, 
you can say I want to receive an alert for that specific uh, service on that specific device. And now I'm jumping into a different functionality of the tool. So we said that the tool Domots is used for real time monitoring, but of course it is also used for triggering events on the network. And this is where at device level, you can tell the tool to send you an email or a push notification if something happens on that specific device. So you can receive an email if the device is marked as down or it's just losing heartbeat, or if the service is not available anymore, as well as uh, putting some uh, triggers on the SNMP monitoring or SNMP sensor that you have created. So if the battery low, uh, load this percentage is very high you get you can get an email or something like that now we show you that the tool is really powerful in uh, uh, scanning an ip network and identify every single device on the network get the attributes of devices and re returns to you those devices but the tool is also able to scan other dif different networks like zb networks and this is done on top of the control for controller at the moment. So we basically retrieve this data out from the control for controller. And we get all the ZigBee devices that are configured on the control for with, uh, with the uh, specific uh, information like the firmware, the SID, and information like the signal level on that specific network. Not only the ZigBee device, we are also good in getting the Crestnet device out of a Crestron controller. So in the same way, if on a network we spot that there is a Crestron controller, we retrieve this information out of the Crestron controller. As you see here, I'm jumping from one side to the other, really within a matter of a few seconds. And this is because we have designed the tool to be really user-friendly when you want to uh, monitor and manage a network from remote. And as I said before, you can use the, the same functionality through a mobile app. Now, let me introduce you to something new here. What we have done on every single device is the discovery of, of the capabilities and uh, uh, information through different protocols, and regardless the brand or the vendor of that device uh, itself. However, on some specific device, we have developed some um, specific drivers that allows us to get more information or more capabilities. So for example, we, we can soft reboot some devices or we can get firmware version or we can get other information like out of uh, uh, audio matrix, we can get which source is connected, which destination and something like that. So for example, on this newer device, you can reboot itself and you can get the firmware version, you get directly the model version of this device, and so on and so forth. And this, is, this has been done with the, so many different vendors that are partnering with Domots, or just by us developing drivers where the, the driver code is available. So we, we are proud to be a customer-driven company, which means that we really listen to your request. So, the, the, all the drivers that have been developed so far are mainly because uh, those drivers have been requested by you multiple times in the past or from multiple customers like you. Now let me jump you in, in some other functionality that really helps you to monitor a network from remote in a very easy way and also helps to configure a network in a, in a very easy way. So what we have developed is another unique uh, feature that relies on SNMP data extracted from switches. So this is a Luxor switch, but be in mind that this really works uh, with uh, TrendNet switches, uh, Snappy via Arachne switches, Stratec switches, HP, Mercatech, Netgear, Package, you name it. Because there are some common RFC out there that allows you to extract for any, any, any single network which port the device which is connected directly to that, that port so for every for every switch in that category we can tell which device is connected to which port and we can extract the network bandwidth usage by that device 
Moreover, we can uh, highlight if there have been errors on that uh, port or if uh, there, are, there have been packets uh, discovered on that port as well. And this now brings me to a different level of uh, capabilities offered by Domox, uh, Domox solution, Domox Pro solution. So we spoke about, so far we spoke about uh, a remote monitoring solution. But if you spot an issue on a site, what it is really important for you is to be able to remotely, uh, remotely uh, fix an issue. And why this brings me to a different level of uh, capabilities, it's because through the same capabilities offered by net network switches, the PoE, in particular the PoE managed network switches, you can definitely access to the power of every single device which is powered by uh, a PoE port. So for example, this camera is powered to a port on uh, this switch, on, on this trendnet switch. So if this, power, this remote camera has some issues, I can just switch off the camera and switch on again, and the camera will basically power boot. And this again works on trendnet switches, uh, Luxus switches, Arachnids, and you name it. Speaking about power management, we are also able through the same simple network, in, uh, simple uh, user interface, to remotely switch uh, power of devices which are connected on top of PDU or simple smart plugs or UPS that offer uh, power through uh, IP. So for example, this, this is a digital logger PDU, and I know that this media player console is, uh, is plugged on, the, on top of that digital logger PDU. And I, the tool is uh, automatically retrieving that this PDU offers also the possibility of reboot that specific outlet. So by hitting that one, you will basically just reboot that single outlet. On that on that network on that PDU, and again for the PDU we offer this driver on a several different type of uh, uh, brands like uh, the digital logger we name the Middle Atlantic the Aten the Snap AV Vault Box Surgex Ubiquity Panamax Blue Ball you name it. A third level of power control is offered natively by the device. So some devices have basically the functionality of software reboot. And we leverage on those functionality to, um, to reboot or restart the service inside the network. We saw already this button on other devices, but this is available on Sonos devices, on Creston devices, on Control 4, DirecTV, Chromecast, and again, you name the, the devices that we really cover here. So by, by hitting the button reboot now, it basically you hit a command, a software command to the Creston, in this case, to the Creston controller to reboot the service. And now the last functionality in terms of power control that I want to show you is what, what it's called um, uh, wake on LAN functionality. So on this side, for example, I have uh, a desktop computer that is just sleeping from, since seven hour. And most of the desktop computer have the wake on LAN functionality available at, uh, at the BIOS level. And by hitting the button, you basically send a command to that specific device to wake, and it will show online on the network. Or you can just mark this, this device as, in, as uh, always wake, which means that as soon as our tool spot device has been offline, you get that device uh, awakened by our service directly. And this covers all of the functionality about the power management. But what is really important through the domos is also a way to remote connect to every single device on the network through their native um, services. One of the most important services, the HTTP service, and through domos, without setting up any VPN between the site and your office, Without, be, without opening any port on the router, which is really a bad practice from a security perspective, you can just jump into the device in a really secure way. So what we offer through Domots 
is a, a, a scan of all the services available, some of the services available on that specific device, and the possibility to establish a secure channel between that device and our cloud. And what we offer here is, uh, is really a, a secure way to connect to our cloud and to the endpoint of the tunnel that we created. And this really works well with natively with some protocol like HTTP, HTTPS, or some console like Telnet or SSH, or remote desktop protocol on a Windows machine. And you can, specific, you can add a custom connection here if you have the different ports that you want to jump into. Or you can rely on a generic TCP tunnel, which means that we create a tunnel for you and we provide you with end points for that specific tunnel on that specific uh, device. And you can use your own software to jump into that device. So for example, you can open the control for ports to manage the control for controller and use your control for programmer in your office to remotely access to the control for controller there. The same works with Crestron, the same works with Savant, and the same mechanism you can use for accessing the true VNC to a VNC server or to an Apple, um, an Arplay. Now, let's go ahead and show some additional feature offered through Domos. So we do not only scan the local network for devices, we also offer a solution to monitor the network in the outside connection, so what we call uh, one connection. We perform automatically sp uh, speed tests against uh, uh, some service out on the cloud from your local network, and we report the results on a historical, uh, uh, you know, historical graph. But we are also able to, um, to ping a specific target like Google, Spotify, or you can customize it. And through this series of ping that we send to the target, we can highlight if there has been any issue on that specific network. So this feature like speed test and the trace route scan that uh, thing that we are doing are really helpful if you want to troubleshoot an issue with your customer. So you might have your customer calling and saying, oh, during the night, I have always bad time in, uh, in uh, streaming Netflix. And you can spot in the history of speed tests that every single night there is a, a drop in the bandwidth. This is my view to the local network, might be to the traffic in the neighborhood or something with, uh, that you can manage with the ISP and you can provide to the ISP. While you can use the root analysis to spot if there is an issue locally in the network or between the network and the ISP or outside of the network completely. Everything is reported also in a historical um, dashboard like downtime. So if we spot that the specific site is not reachable from the cloud, we mark that, uh, that network as offline or connection down. And we can, uh, we can uh, see here the history of, of the entire network. So we, we saw already that for every single device, you can set up alerts uh, on terms of uh, downtime of the specific device or on specific parameters of the devices, you can set up alerts. But there, are, there is also a quick access to all the alerts configured for that specific site in this tab, alert management. And this is where you can also set an alert if specific agents goes down, which means it's not reachable anymore from the cloud, or if it's a new device is discovered on the network. Let me tell you that this feature is really like uh, having a network secure from, uh, from a connectivity perspective. So if a new device is spot on the network, you receive an alert. So if you manage that network and you are sure that that network shouldn't receive any new device connected there, then this is triggering in you a sort of uh, uh, security alert. And from the same view, you can review all the uh, the alerts that be, have been configured for the devices on that network. Let me mention here that alerts are per user base. So I'm logged in with my account, and I can set my own alerts. But your colleagues or your team members 
ca can have their own account and they can have their own set of alerts configured, which might be different from you. And this is really important because you can have two different field operator or team members or technician that they really need to take care of two different sets of uh, sites for monitoring. So one person, one uh, technician will set alerts on a specific subset of networks and the one technician on a different sub 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 net, uh, subset of networks. At the same time, you might have a technician really specified in specific devices like Creston devices and he sets alerts only for Creston while another technician, which is specified on a different subset of network devices, for example, he really takes care of setting alerts for those network devices. Let me jump into another, the next tile and the next feature, which is called collaboration. This is a way to share access to the networks that you manage to other Domots users out there. This is really important if you have a collaboration outside of your company with other company, for example, to manage a specific issue on a specific network. Or the same functionality is available through our partner, manufacturer partner to allow them to access entirely to your network for three hours. So through the mean of this button, you will basically allow Luxel, but there will be there is new world that will be in the future trend and our and other partner manufacturer. You allow their support team to access to your network. So imagine you have a real-time call with your customer, and at the same time you won't call your your uh, Luxel support and have them access to your network to fix an issue on a switch. You can do that directly to Domots in real time. Let me jump to the next tile, which is customer management. This is where you can specify some information of the owner of the network, so like the home, home uh, owner name or the, uh, the business uh, owner name and email address and the exact location of the agents. So this is what happens, what, what appears in the map and in, in the main overview. Or you can specify specific uh, some other notes here. You can uh, insert uh, the 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 time that the, the your customer wants to be called and something like that. Through the same view, you can enable your customer to have access to what we call Violet, which is our customer facing app. It's an app that it's delivered to your customer with your log on top of that one, your contact details, and some basic functionality that they can use to access to their local network. So far, Violet Customer Facing App is really ad addressing the residential market, so it's more for the families, and as a matter of fact, it offers a way of uh, blocking devices on the network, or schedule devices not accessing the net, uh, the, the, the internet at specific times. So it's a sort of parental control app that you can offer to your customer. This is basically most of the features available now through the Domots app or through the web app. Now, let's see uh, the the portal and that, let's see the uh, the service that you usually use to manage your team you to manage your subscription sites and network that you want to manage and other configuration of your account so this is the main ad, uh, address for our portal portal.domots.com you can manage your team from the team tab and from the team tab you can add members which are uh, accounts that will share access all to all the networks that you have configured on your account, or field operators, which are a specific accounts that have only access to some specific sites. So when I log in with uh, this account, which is field operator, uh, as a field operator, I can only access to the two networks that I've selected through this management console. From the subscription tab, on the other hand, you can manage all the sites that you are you want to monitor in terms of uh, um, availability or licenses that you want to put on those sites. You can use this uh, console also to rename the sites. So 
this is a different name and you can save it and that's up that will appear on the app and on the web app as well or you can use you can use this console to extend the validity of uh, a specific site. So you have renewed a contract with your Fulham customer, and you can extend for other 12 months directly from here. Now, let's see other functionality available through the portal. You can download software through the portal. You can add features through the portal. But you can also uh, configure or customize your own account. So you can specify your names, your address, and you can brand your own uh, your own web app or the app with your logo. But this logo, let me mention that this logo goes also into the Violet app that we mentioned before, so the customer facing app. And it also goes on reports that you can generate on the network. And I will show you a little bit later how to generate it. So the same uh, through the same portal and account page, you can uh, configure some setting which are basically something that we really uh, added recently. So uh, let me spend a few words here. So this is the Domots Daily Alert Digest, which is basically uh, a way for you to configure uh, collecting or summarize alerts on a specific time window of, of the day or for the entire day. So for example, if you don't want to receive alerts during the night, you can set up a digest between uh, uh, 6 p.m. in the night and uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. And what happens is that during the night, we will collect the alerts for you and we will send at 8 more, 8 o'clock in the morning a single email with all the events that happened during the night. So this is really something that you can use for, um, for example, in teams that have uh, different uh, time shifts during the day. So one team during the, during the morning, one team during the afternoon. Or you can set up a daily, one time per day uh, digest that is really helpful if you have a supervisor that wants to keep one email per day with everything that happened during the last, uh, the last day. Let me mention uh, another feature that had been just added, which is the two-factor authentication. So let me discuss the change. So through the two-factor authentication, you can basically ensure that your uh, network, that the, that the access to your network is secured by a, 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 a second way of authenticating to the, into the web app or into the app or into the web or into the portal. We rely on the, on the uh, different type of authenticator software like Google Authenticator, like a Microsoft Authenticator. What happens here is that as soon as you uh, um, as soon as you enable the two-factor authenticator, a, a, a QR code is proposed to you. You can scan, scan the QR code through the Google Authenticator app, and uh, two-factor authentication is enabled. So next time you log in, you will be asked for a username, password, and the code generated by the, the authenticator mechanism that you choose, Google, uh, Microsoft, and you name it. There is a last feature added recently, which is the demo mode, which is available through the portal, through this button, or through the web app as well, which basically jump into uh, the same web app that we saw before, but without requiring a physical agent installed on a specific network, and if you use your mobile, without requiring a connectivity to the internet. So, Imagine you are abroad and you want to show to your customer abroad the functionality through Domots and you don't want to use a, a three giga connection, whatever, you can use directly that demo mode there. Just one thing I forgot to mention about the functionality available here through the web app or through the app is the report and logging functionality. So through the logging, you, have, you can keep track of all the activities performed on that specific site. So for example, if somebody one of your technician has done a remote connection to one of the devices, you have everything tracked here. Or you can just add a new note, a new note here, say visited the customer on site. So you can really use this as a tracking note for that specific customer. And then speaking about the same uh, concept of customer, you can use this fun feature, which, is, which allows you to generate a report 
which is basically a PDF report, and send it through your email. What happens is that you will receive a report like this, which is, as we said before, is customized with your name here, your logo, and your company name here, and other information. And this report is really ready to be sent to your customers. It contains a list of uh, devices on the network, alerts which have been configured, uh, speed test exceeded in last month, and some ping results as well. So information really available to your customer. At the same time, you can extract the device list of all devices uh, discovered on that network, and the logical connectivity between devices and the suite network switches, or devices and PDU. So this really allows you to rebuild the topology of the network, not only from uh, an IP perspective, but also for, uh, from uh, a power perspective if you are using PDUs. Let me spend really two words on what coming next, because uh, as you might be aware, if you are using Domot since a while, we are really fast in developing new feature. Uh, we bring in production a feature almost every two weeks. So in a couple of weeks, some of the, the feature that I just showed probably will be obsolete, so and some other feature will be added very soon. One of these is the possibility to add external subnet to be monitored, and you can add them directly to the web app. We are going to add the possibility to, um, to configure a dumb device or a device which is not connected to any network just for the usage through the PDU. So for example, if you have a cable box and you want the possibility to reboot the cable box through the PDU, you will be allowed to do that. We are also going to add some uh, um, advanced functionality on top of some of the Wi-Fi access point, like Rakos will be the first one, but some of them will come soon. It will allow you to monitor all the clients connected to access point, the signal level on, the, on those clients, and the signal level of the access point itself. So if there is any noise around that access point, you will, be, you will see those through the domos. Now, let's see, as a last thing, let me share the access to my mobile. Here we go. So what I want to show you is how you really configure a new agent on a new network. So I'm on the Domots uh, Pro app, and as I saw, uh, as I told you before, this really looks like uh, in, in, this, in the same. It really looks exactly the same way as we saw on the web app. But imagine you are on a new site, you plug in a new Domots box, or you are you have installed the software on any of the supported devices that we have there. What you really do through the web through the app, mobile app is to find a new agent on the local network. And in a matter of a few seconds, you have the agent found that, net, that network and shows you the IP address and the port where the service is available. Let me mention that in some cases, you might not be on uh, with mobile phone, you might not be on the same network and you want to access to that same web service through a laptop or whatever, you can do that. You just have, you just need the IP address of the bo Domots box or the, in general, the Domots agent that you have installed on the, on the network there. So basically what happens is you jump into the Domots uh, agent web app. Uh, I'm going to log in with one of my installer colleagues uh, account. And basically, it, the agents will connect to the cloud. You give a name to the network. So this is webinar network. This is a home, and you continue. And you select for how long you want the network to be monitored. Let's monitor for one month for starting. So basically, what happens now, the agents have been configured. I have the uh, software already scanning the network, and the, really in a matter of few minutes, I uh, will have the new agent showing in my app or in my web app. So it should appear already here. 
So this is configuring now. So I, I see that it's configuring. As you can see, it has already scanned 81 devices. And in a matter of few minutes, it will reach every single device with the specific details that we saw before. So like firmware for the supported version, model number, names extracted from multiple uh, protocol, and so forth. This really brings me to the end of this demo. And since, yeah, it's 40 minutes, uh, we still have time to answer to some of the questions that I'm quite sure have came during this presentation. Yeah, we have a few questions. Uh, let me get into them. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and post any more questions right now, uh, and they will get handed off to me or answered. Also, wanted to let everybody know we are recording this. Uh, I will edit the recording and get it up on our website and on our YouTube channel. And once that's there, I will send everybody who signed up for this webinar an email letting you know that it's available so you can watch it again. All right. So the first question is, will Domots always send a ping every 30 seconds, even if offline time is, is set to custom time? Will this affect the ability of the devices to enter sleep mode? Uh, answer to your question, the, the quick answer is yes. We still scan uh, every single device every 30 seconds. However, if you have set a custom time for, let's say, half an hour, uh, we report that device offline only if it meets every single heartbeat for a half an hour. So for 30 minutes, it needs to miss every single heartbeat. I'm sorry, I was looking for the next question I didn't hear. Is that going to affect that device's ability to go into sleep mode? Uh, usually not. And as a matter of fact, um, mobile phones like iPhones or even Android phones, they really go in sleep mode very often. Our ping is really light. It's what we call Singa. And uh, the, the, the single ping that we send to the device does not wake up awake the device itself. Great. All right. Is there support for Ubiquity devices? Because we didn't talk about any of those. That's true. We do support Ubiquity switches already. So Ubiquity switch, uh, PoE switch from Ubiquity are already supported. So you can control the PoE port or uh, ubiquitous switches. We do, if I remember correctly, we do also support the, the software boot of ubiquitous switch. And we also have one of the PDU made by uh, ubiquity available through, through Domos and thanks to our drivers. So answer your question, yes, we do support ubiquity devices. What we are going to do more, and this is, was part of my presentation, uh, we are going to add capabilities on top of uh, Wi-Fi access point. The first one will be Rakus, but soon after there will be others, and for sure Ubiquity will be in that list as well. Uh, next question, is there a way to expand the history so that you can see more than just the last seven days? Unfortunately, at the moment, this is not possible. So I, I'm quite sure you're referring to the downtime uh, tab of the network. This is not possible. You cannot extend that uh, window. But we, are, we have that, that one in our backlog of things to, to, to announce. So I'm quite sure you're referring to, oh, let, me, let me jump into this one, to this downtime. So here, we report just the last seven days of activities. And yeah, I mean, we have the data. Uh, so in, in one of the, the announcements that we are going to deploy, there will be a possibility to scroll down and retry uh, uh, past data. On the other hand, if you are interested in the past data in terms of speed test, we are really able to show you uh, the speed test result in, since the beginning, so since one year ago, if, we, if you have installed the, the agents one year ago. In this case, I just installed this agent probably 45 days ago. 
So that longer history is available in the portal, not necessarily on the web app. Um, no, that that uh, that report, so the network speed test, is available through the web app, but also available through the mobile app. So even in the mobile app, you have the same uh, capabilities of seeing a history of the speed test. Even though you are not able to, if I remember correctly, in the in the app, you are not able to select. A different zoom but you have at least the last the last few days there okay great does domo's auto detect ports configured for the device or do these have to be known if not the default port 80 you are referring to the web app so the uh, the remote connectivity we were speaking about here just a second. So we, we, we saw here that you have the possibility to jump into the web interface of any single uh, device. So in this case, it was a front office camera. But if the service is not on the, on the class, on the standard uh, port 80, you can create your custom uh, connection on a different port. So for example, 8888, and then jump into that port. Of course, this is not available on this camera, so it's, it's not going to work. But this is the concept. So you can really specify the port where you expect the service to be available. And as I was mentioning during the, the presentation, you have the possibility to use your own software to connect to the, to the end device. So for example, if you are using VNC and you have a VNC client, you just open the port of VNC as ever on the end device, and then use the open TCP tunnel here to remotely connect there. And again, you don't need to port forward on the router, or you don't need to be, uh, to set up a VPN through that to that side. I hope this that uh, answer to the question, if I understood correctly. Um, and I'm not sure. Maybe they can post if we didn't answer that question for them. And I, and I think one of the things was they were just curious if uh, the device uh programs or, or uses a different port than a standard port if domos can auto detect what port the device is using well not at the moment we are not scanning all the ports of the devices and this is basically because uh, some devices might be affected by the multiple scans on different ports but you as i said you can specify the port by himself by yourself we are also posting some guides on uh, the most common ports that you can use to remotely connect to some of the devices out there. Like we said, we named the Control 4, the Creston, the Salon, the Lutron uh, devices, or even uh, BNC or other network devices out there. Uh, so speaking of other devices, somebody was asking about Z-Wave devices. Do we, are those supported? Those devices are not yet supported. As I was mentioning, Zigbee devices and Crestnet device, the scan that we do actually relies on uh, a sort of gateway that should be available on the network. So for, for Zigbee device, we rely on the control for controller. So for the Z-Way device, so what we really need is a, a gateway to be on the network. What we have developed, and it's already a proof of concept, we probably put in production really soon, is a way to interact to SmartThings uh, uh, gateway. This will be a cloud to cloud integration, let's see, let's say. And in that case, you will be able to get Z Wave devices connected to the SmartThings uh, uh, controller. Great. Uh, we had a couple of people ask, what about feature requests? If we have uh, some sort of something we want to ask you to do for us. So our main contact channel is our support email address, which is support at domots.com. You can use that channel. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You can use that channel, of course, for support requests, but also for feature requests. We keep track of every single feature and we keep counting users re requesting multiple, uh, the same feature multiple times. And we usually prioritize feature on, on top of that uh, counting, let's say. So yes, if you have uh, feature requests, we are really keen to get those requests coming through. 
uh, we really take in account any single request. Yeah. So uh, Jamie also wanted me to mention that uh, you can also send feature requests to sales at domos.com. Um, and that we are very customer driven. We like to hear those features and, and get them from people. All uh, right. So let's see. Next one. How can I reset my unit to start from scratch as I have hundreds of devices that are no longer there? I don't even see a mass delete feature by checking, devi checking devices. It seems it needs to be done one by one. Well, there are two ways of resetting an agent. So let's, let's start from the quick one, and the, which is what we call the soft one, which is a way to delete all the offline devices that you might have on a network all together. And this is available directly through the web app or through the app. If you jump into the offline devices here, at the bottom of the page, you have a button to remove all offline devices in one. By doing that, you will remove all the offline devices in one time. This is a way to clean up the, the list of devices, of course. But you can also completely remove an agent from your list. And this is available through the portal. So if you go on the portal and go to the subscription, and you have to, your own box unplugged from the network, you can go to edit, and you can delete the agent. This will be basically clean up that agent forever. So not only delete the, the devices there, but it will also delete the history of the speed test and other confusion that you might have done for that specific agent. So you, if you are using a Domus box, basically this is a way to reuse it on a different customer. Great. Um, and I don't know if you you know this or not, uh, but somebody asked about when will Domus be able to be, excuse me, be available on an Alexa router. And did you know that that's today? Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, we got confirmation from Blaxel uh, that yesterday they made public the firmware upgrade for the Epic 3 and the Epic 4 routers to have downloads there. So whoever has automatic firmware upgrade has already the latest firmware with downloads there. Sounds good. Uh, besides two-factor authentication, how else are you focused on the security of our clients? We are really keen to security. And uh, being one of the, the, the first developer in the Domots, I really, uh, we really took security in consideration from the first day. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, we have our security principle uh, available through the domots uh, through the web pages of domots and so uh, they are available to everybody if you go to knowledge base you have uh, the security principle that they if you see there are dated uh, august 2016 if i remember correctly so they are really really there since the first days so as you have seen during the remote connection all the connection that we establish are on secure channel encrypted secure channel and we don't encourage users to open ports on the routers. We don't require that. And the, uh, the, our cloud infrastructure has been uh, uh, put under security inspection. So it has been put under um, uh, security scan from third party company. And uh, this makes Domots really secure. As you might know, this is a really public, public thing. So Domots is really one of the service provider for Best Buy for their Magnolia service. And as such, we have been put under due diligence specifically for, from, for this, from a, a security perspective. In any case, if you have uh, any further doubt or you have a specific uh, thing to be clarified, just drop an email to support at domots.com and we can share with you our principle and other information about our security policies. Giancarlo, maybe you could, because you just mentioned the knowledge base uh, in that last question, maybe you could just pop open a browser window and show them where to get to the knowledge base. Sure. I'm putting them on the spot. Sure. sure. You, you can access the knowledge base. 
directly from the portal. So by clicking on the knowledge base tab, or you can just use the web pages. So www.dolans.com and you go in the knowledge base tab. And this is where you have the user guide, some installation guide, technical videos, technical documentation. All the webinars, including this one, will be recorded here and all the other stuff available here. All right. So that takes care of all of our online uh, questions. I think there is a couple of ongoing conversations in the background that we will continue with. And if anybody has any more questions now, they'd like they want to post, they can go ahead. But I know everybody is busy working today, and we have used up just about every minute of our hour. So we're going to uh, stay online to answer questions, but we are going to stop broadcasting so that people can get back to work. So I appreciate everybody coming. Thank you very much. We uh, enjoy doing these for everybody and hope that it helps everybody a lot. Goodbye, everybody, and thank you for your time. We really appreciate your time uh, following our webinar.